Are you a service provider with a residential program that's been on lockdown? Or are you a parent with an individual that you haven't seen for some time? In today's video, I'm going to go through five steps that can help reopen residential programs to visitation and parents in as safe a way as possible. Stick around and we'll cover these. I'm Dr. Greenberg and welcome back. In today's video, I want to go through five steps that can be extremely helpful to service providers who are looking to reopen their residential programs to visitors and family. When the pandemic started, most service providers with residential programs had to lock these programs down and in essence limit and then eventually exclude all visitors from many of the houses. This was absolutely necessary to ensure the safety and well-being of the direct support professionals, other staff, and the individuals in the residence. Since the phased reopening of Maryland started, the infection rate both in Maryland as a whole and in the service provider community has stabilized and it has been decreasing on a regular basis. With this decrease in infection rate and stabilization, the whole of Maryland has reopened in many fashions and service providers are trying to do the same thing with their residential programs to allow parents particularly to see their loved ones. So I wanna go through five small steps that can help service providers. Requires careful selection and screening of those that are gonna to come to the residence. Service providers should develop a program whereby they screen any prospective individuals who may visit the residence prior to them coming. All individuals that come to visit in a residence should be asked the key questions to help determine whether they have any signs or symptoms consistent with COVID-19. It's helpful to develop a specific questionnaire, go through the questions with any parent or individual that will be coming to the residence and ensure that they do not have any of the risk factors or symptoms that would suggest possible infection. This screening ideally should take place 24 to 48 hours before the individuals come to the residence. Number two, the second thing that's particularly important in reopening the residences to visitors is limiting both the number of individuals that come to the residence to visit as well as the duration of time that visitation occurs. We know with the coronavirus, the larger the group of individuals, the greater the chance of transmission and infection. We also know that if an individual has the coronavirus and is asymptomatic, for example, a visitor, the longer the duration of contact between that individual and either direct support professionals or individuals in the resident, the greater the chance of transmission. For this reason, it would be good for service providers to establish some limitation on the time that visitation occurs. For example, a 15 minute or half hour visit would generally be much safer than a visitation for two or three hours. The third and very important safety step that can be taken by service providers involves where 
the visits are going to occur. We know that confined spaces allow for transmission in a much greater way than outdoor spaces. For this reason, service providers should strongly consider limiting visits to outside the residence. In other words, parents and individuals coming to visit should not enter the residence, but instead visiting could be done, for example, on an outdoor porch in a backyard, perhaps going for a walk in the community. This is far safer than allowing individuals to come into the residence itself. The fourth safety step that's important for providers to incorporate involves PPE and protocols around the visit itself. While the guidelines on this vary somewhat, some good thoughts would be the following. Consider having all staff, all direct support professionals, continue to wear surgical face masks or facial coverings, depending upon what the provider is using. Consider asking parents to wear a mask when they visit. And I would suggest, if the supply permits, consider having them wear a surgical face mask, since this is a more effective barrier than cloth face coverings. So a face mask of some form by all parties would be the first important thing to consider. The next would be have everybody that's part of the visit, the direct support professionals, the parents, and even the individuals if they're able to, wash their hands or with the visit occurring outdoors, have the parents use hand sanitizer prior to engaging with their individual. The fourth item that service providers should consider involves which people should visit and how many. In general, we do know that many people with the coronavirus are asymptomatic but able to transmit it. This is even more common in younger individuals and particularly common in children. Service providers may want to consider initially limiting visits to no more than one or two adults and excluding children from visiting, at least at the beginning. The fifth and last step that service providers can consider incorporating into their program involves confining visits to the residence and outdoor setting, specifically the outdoor setting in the residence. And what I mean by that is limiting and not allowing individuals to leave the residence and go for extended time periods with families. Once an individual leaves the residence, there is a much greater likelihood that they will be exposed to the coronavirus and they are in a much more uncontrolled circumstance than they would be if they are in the residence. So an individual who leaves the residence and goes to visit with their family at home does not have the same protective measures in place as they do when they're in the residence. This is a very individual decision that each service provider, each family, and each residential unit has to make. There may be times where everybody is in agreement that an individual will be leaving the residence for a visit to a family house and all parties are aware that this carries an increased risk. This decision has to be individualized both based upon what the family and providers are comfortable with and based upon the point in time in the pandemic. So these are the five steps that can help service providers open up their residential programs to visitors. It is extremely important to recognize 
that while the infection, hospitalization, and death rate in Maryland has decreased dramatically, Maryland has been one of the later states to open in its phased implementation. Many other states that opened before Maryland are now facing large spikes in infection rate. And as of the making of this video, there are a number of states which have had to reimpose and backtrack on their reopening plans. I strongly encourage all service providers to move very slowly, and I encourage all parents to understand that the coronavirus is still present and still a real risk to everybody. Much better to move slow and be safe than to rush something and then wind up with infections. I hope this video has been helpful and in upcoming videos I'll cover some more aspects of residential reopening as well as reopening in general. Please, if you like this video and it's helpful, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. I don't know too much about YouTube video making, so this is new to me and really would appreciate everybody's support. Please leave a comment. I really do enjoy reading them and everybody stay safe.